Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And this week, we got some Gunpla announcements for mobile suits that were long overdue. From Witchrom Mercury's prologue, we are finally getting the High Grade Hyndra and the High Grade Lefrith pre production type. Both are slated for a May release and are unfortunately P Bandai Limited because we can't have nice things anymore. The Heingra goes for 1980 N, 13 US, and well, it's the Heingra. If you've built any of the Heindri kits, you probably know exactly what to expect from this solid kit. But the bigger deal of the two was, of course, the Lefrith pre production type, which goes for 2420 N, 16 US. Nobody understands why it took so long for this thing to finally be announced. But here it is, and boy does it look amazing. Um, it can also be built with the gun arm system on or off, and for weapons, it comes with that long beam rifle, 20 gunned bits in regular flying mode, and 6 gunned bits that are primed and ready to explode. And they are all compatible with the Witra Mercury weapon action base set, so you can have them flying around all over the place. Something tells me that this set is going to be pretty hard slash expensive to get your hands on. But if you thought you had to wait a long time for a model kit of the Lafridge pre-production type, then let me introduce you to our third Gumpla announcement of this week. The Full Mechanics Sword Calamity Gundam. Now, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that, the Sword Calamity has been a fan favorite ever since the thing first appeared. And it never got its like its own dedicated model kit. We had that like conversion model kit from Hobby Japan over two decades ago, but it never got its own kit. Which is even weirder when you consider that they did have a model kit line specifically for the Gundam Seed MSV line. But now we are finally getting it in May for 6050N41 US. And it really was worth the wait. It is one hell of a looker and it's got a nice array of accessories. Uh, the Schwertgewehrs come with individual beam effect parts or beam effect parts for when they're together. There's two Midas Messer boomerangs with effect parts and two action bases, two Panzer Eisen rocket anchors um, with wires, and I'm assuming they would also work with those included action bases, but they don't actually confirm that, so we'll have to see about that. And there's also two armor Schneiders with the calamities, well, with the sword calamities model number engraved in them. The only real remark I have here is its color scheme. In most of its depictions, the sword calamity is more of a red color, and here it's quite orange. But in a few depictions it does also have that orange color so you can take that color accuracy however you want. And to wrap up the Gunpla news it was announced that Takanori Nishikawa will be making will be making an appearance at the Hyper Plamo Fest 2024. He'll do a live performance and will also hold a stage talk. Meanwhile, on the figure front then, the Cosmo Fleet special Reolula RE was announced and went up for pre-order at regular hobby stores, so I'll have that linked down below. And the deal here is the same as with those previous RE releases. The mold is the same as the old version, 
but it's now got extra weathering and water slide decals. And because of this, the price is also higher. Uh, 9,900 yen, which is around 70 US, I believe. Um, but from what I've heard, these Cosmo Fleet, like these Cosmo Fleet special ships have seriously gone up in price. So even with its higher retail price, this might actually be a bargain. You can either display it by itself or with the included in-scale Neo Zeong, which also comes with its own action base. And this bad boy will be sailing your way in late June. And then just as I was about to start recording this video, I also noticed that we got some new Metal Robot Spirits announcements. With the big thing here being the Destiny Gundam Spec 2. The base figure goes for 18,700 yen, 126 US, and it already comes with an impressive amount of accessories by itself. Things like that new railgun and effect parts for the beam boomerangs, beam sabers, arandite, palma fiocina, and both beam shields. But things get even more crazy and expensive when you add the extra sets into the mix. For 7,150 yen, 48 US, there's the Wings of Light and Effect set, which does come with more things than you might expect, because not only do we get the Wings of Light and more dynamic beam effect parts, but we're also getting like four shortened versions of the Arendite and the Beam Cannon, making these already impressive weapons even more impressive. But then for 19,800 yen, 133 US, there is the Zeus silhouette. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first time that a striker pack slash silhouette pack slash add-on set by itself is more expensive than the base machine that it's supposed to go on. Um, but it sure is an impressive thing in its own right. Um, it can function as a mobile armor, or it can Voltron with the Destiny Spec 2 to create this impressive looking beast of a mobile suit. And those chonky legs and that giant cannon are definitely giving me some Advance of Zeta vibes. Now you just gotta add the Wings of Light and it is completely overkill. For your wallet. Because that makes for a grand total of $370 before, of course, shipping and import costs or the inflated regional prices. Because typically um, they take like the yen price and divide it by 100 which gives us a total of $456. So let's round that up and say that the full set is going to set you back $500. Uh, the Destiny Gundam spec to itself will be shipping out in July and the option sets will be shipping out in August. And then there's also the Force Impulse Gundam spec 2 with Railgun, but unlike the Destiny Gundam spec 2, all other information will be released soon. The Gundam Seed Freedom movie itself then continues to absolutely slay in Japanese cinemas. Um, with over 1.2 million viewers going in the first 10 days. And with the movie now having entered its third week, there is a new free gift for moviegoers. One of two random frame films featuring highlights from the movie. Unfortunately though, there is still no announcement on when the movie will make its way to the West, except for like Australia apparently. Um, but what you can do is watch the first six and a half minutes on YouTube through the power of NordVPN, because of course it is region locked to Japan only. So you can use the code KKRT or the link down below to not just get a sweet discount on Nord, but to also support the channel. And if you're going to be watching Japan only videos with a VPN anyways, you might as well watch director Fukuda and Takanori Nishikawa's comments 
on those first six and a half minutes. Also linked down below. As for what is shown in those first few minutes then, you don't have to worry about not understanding Japanese. It is basically just mech porn set to um, the new song from Takanori Nishikawa. And one piece of attention to detail that I really enjoyed was when they closed the visor of their helmets, their voices actually started sounding like they were wearing helmets, something that you typically don't see. Uh, so yeah, if you can watch it, I highly recommend you to watch it. No Japanese language skills required to understand it at all, and you're also not getting any real spoilers, at least nothing that you wouldn't have been able to get from the trailers. And from Japanese cinemas then, we got the images of the special stage greeting that Rie Tanaka did at the Shinjuku Piccadilly Cinema for Lacus's birthday. Uh, she's giving off some serious Lacus vibes with that pink getup of hers, and she was also presented with a Lacus themed birthday cake. Perfect. And other freedom-related events are the Sapporo Snow Festival opening up, where there is a Rising Freedom Snow Sculpture, and this event lasts until the 11th, and all of the images of the Gundam Seed Freedom all over Japan event have been released. Now, I'm sure many of you will remember that Witch from Mercury Twitter event thing, where Soleta and Mirene traveled all over Japan, and this is basically the same thing. But instead of just the two main characters, it is now most of the main cast from Freedom that is going to these tourist attractions all over Japan. There's 47 images in total, each depicting a hot tourist spot from one of Japan's 47 prefectures. I'll have the website linked down below where you can find all of those images in full quality and you can also find some information for the Japan-only campaign they're having. Uh, so, if you're in the neighborhood during your next Japan trip, why not go out there and replicate these pictures? Or, if you're really obsessed, you can of course plan your trip around the locations of your favorite character or characters. Looks like I'm going to Niigata, Gunma, Aichi, Mie, Saga and Kumamoto. And talking about favorite characters, currently the Gundam Seed series Grand Prix 2024 is going on, which is basically a giant poll for who the most popular character is and what the most popular machine is from the Gundam Seed universe. Uh, voting started on the 5th and will last until the 25th, and you can vote for your favorite character or your favorite mobile suit once every day. Plus, you can give him an extra boost by tweeting about it. Um, so, if you want to help your favorite character or mobile suit slash mecha to the top, I will have that linked down below. Uh, you can basically choose from any important character and mobile suit from Gundam Seed, Gundam Seed Destiny, and Gundam Seed Freedom, but unfortunately not Stargazer, which... I mean, it's not a hot take to say that Stargazer is the best of the three. But anyways, so while it was easy for me to pick my favorite character, choosing my favorite mobile suit without the Strike Noir was significantly harder. But moving on to the new merchandise. Uh, from Cinemas, or the Fruvi website, you can get this holder thing for 700 yen, a little under 5 US, that is designed to hold a section of that frame film that you get for free. Or a random motel style acrylic keychain for 800 yen, a little over 5 US. You can get one with the name and birth date of Kira, Lacus, Athran, Kigali, Shin, Izag, Diarka, and Orphe. Uh, from regular hobby stores, then, you can get Kira, Lacus, Athran, Kigali, Shin, Luna Maria, Izag, Diarka, and Orphe as a full set of Kado Kara for 6390 yen. 
43 US, which are like acrylic stands designed to make the characters look like they're either sitting or hanging from a corner. For 8,910 yen, 60 US, you can get a full set of Fua Kororin, which are very rotund plushies. For the same price, you can get them as Hakkara, which are literally cute clamps, um, which is how they hug onto things. Um, and again, for the same price, you can get them as Tete Kore plushies, which are designed to be able to hold each other's hands, so you can make a long string of them. And finally, for 7,722 yen, 52 US, you can get them as Tenno Rinzu plushies, which are plushies of the characters inside of a cat costume. All of these items are slated for a June release, and even though they will be releasing through regular hobby stores, if you get them through P Bandai, you'll also get a bonus one. Uh, for all except one, it is Kira in his pilot suit, and for the Tenorinzu plushies, it is Kira inside of Tori. Meanwhile, on the gaming front then, in Gundam Battle Operation 2, the Musica has joined the fray, continuing the influx of UC Engage machines into the game. In the global version of UC Engage then, the UR GPO4 and UR Shima Garahau have become available as event unit assemblies, and the Peche Montagne A Bouquet for Stardust 2 event has gone live. Completing it will net you the UR Kempfer High Mobility Type, the UR Michelle Kano, and more. And then in Arsenal Base, they're celebrating Valentine with the Valentine Festival. Starting February the 9th, every 100 yen you spend gets you one point, and 10 points can be exchanged for one random promotional card. So that is around 7 US per card. The event will run until the 20th, and the cards that they've unveiled so far are Rue Luca, Quest Pariah, and Luna Maria Hawk. And in other news, tomorrow a new Gachapon store opens up in the Aeon Cinema in Okazaki, and the Mobile Suit Girl of the Week is the Gym Command Space Type, who also has a really cool redesign of the Beam Gun. As for the things you could buy this week then, which was of course again filled to the brim with Gundam Seed Freedom stuff. Starting on February the 2nd, we got Freedom card ass cards. There's 30 different cards to collect, being 15 normals, 10 prisms and 5 golden prisms, and a pack of 3 goes for 200 yen, which is around $1.50. And one day later, you could get some more cards with the Battle Spirits collaboration booster set, called Gundam Fate and Freedom. And as the name indicates, this set is all about the Seed universe. There's 25 new Gundam Seed Freedom cards and 20 reprinted cards from Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny. And if you prefer your cards to come with some snacks, then you could get the Gundam Seed Freedom Wafers on the 5th. One chocolate wafer goes for 165 yen, a little over a dollar, and comes with one of 36 shiny metallic cards. And from the same day, you could get these Gundam Seed Freedom acrylic keychains in arcades across Japan. Where one day later, you could also try your skills, and of course, your luck, to get this Lacus Klein prize figure. And for being a cheaper prize figure, she does look more than fine enough, and I'm sure that she'll also soon become available at regular hobby stores for around $20 to $30. For this week's reading material then, there was the March issue of Animedia, featuring a special on Gundam Seed Freedom, the March issue of Animage, which also has a lot of freedom related things in it, as well as a B2 poster, the March issue of Pash, featuring a bunch of interviews with the cast and an extra large A1 poster, the March issue of Nikkei Entertainment, featuring interviews with a lot of the people who worked on Gundam Seed Freedom, including one with director Fukuda himself, and there was the Yamane Kimitoshi production design Sunrise Edition, 
featuring a huge amount of mechanical designs that he did for Sunrise. Things like Cowboy Bebop, Gundam Siege, The Origin, the Await MS team, and much, much more. On to this week's Gundam Apparel then, where Bon Kode kicked things off with an addition to their retro Kika collection. You can now also get her on a zip-up hoodie for 8,470 N, 57 US, and a blanket for 4,950 N, 33 US, both of which will be releasing in March. And this was then, of course, followed by more Gundam Seed Freedom things. There's a Compass, Terminal, or Foundation t-shirt for 3,520 N, um, around 25 US, Caps with the same designs for 3,960 N, also around 25 US. A mug with, again, one of those three designs for 2,530 N, a little over 15 US. A Compass Terminal Foundation or Zaft pouch for 1,430 N, a little under 10 US. And an acrylic keychains with one of those four designs for 770 N, around 5 US all of which are slated for an April release. And if you want to get even more acrylic stands, almost all of the main characters are available as a connecting acrylic stand for 1,100 yen each around 7, 8 US, which will be releasing in March. There's just one important character missing who is also famous for being a pilot. Like, just look at the entire lineup and see if you can spot who is missing. Kagali. She just cannot catch a break. But I do also have some good news for the Kagali fans. In May, these Kigali and Lacus inspired earrings will be releasing. On one side, there is a flower related to the character, and on the other side, a like tear shaped crystal in the color of their eyes, as some of you correctly pointed out when I covered the Kira and Atheran earrings. They go for 4,180 and a pair, of which I also forgot to write down the exact conversion, so around 30 US and are available as either like regular piercing type earrings or the fake squeezy types. And we get even more Gundam Seed Freedom stuff from Strig G. They collaborated with Fruit of the Loom to create these Compass, Terminal and Foundation t-shirts that go for 5,510 each, 37 US, and these Kira Grey Compass, Shin Wine Red Compass, terminal and foundation caps that go for 6,600 yen each, 44 US. And then in collaboration with Tamashi Nations, there's this acrylic keychain for 880 yen, 6 US, and an acrylic stand of Kira, Atheran, Shin, Lunamaria, and Agnes for 1,650 yen a pop, 11 US. They're up for pre-order on P Bandai and are slated for a March release. And as always, let's quickly wrap things up with the polls. A few weeks ago, Gundam.info wanted to know which Gumpla from the Gundam built metaverse we'd like to use in battle. And with 45.8%, the perfect strike Rouge won. It might not have done too much in the anime, nor did it have a particularly admirable pilot, but it sure looks awesome and it comes packing with an array of deadly weapons. And they're ready for just about any situation, making them perfect for any ace pilot. Which is of course what we all are in our own stories. Second place then goes to the amazing Barb's Loops, which is a badass looking machine with an equally badass pilot. So it's no surprise that it at least managed to come close to first place with 32.9%. 30, uh, and finally then, we almost had a tie for last place. The Tiffius Gundam Chimera had 10.8% and the Law Gundam 10.5%. And 
it's kind of crazy to see the main Gundam and the main enemy machine to come in at the bottom of what is essentially a popularity poll. Not that I'm surprised about that, but still. So quickly moving on to the currently ongoing poll. With the re-release of the Gundam Girls Generation Ina Sakhalin in late February, Gundam.info wants to know who the most iconic siblings in Gundam are. Shar and Sayla, Judo and Lena, Seabook and Liz, or Zex and Rolina. And once again, we get a very interesting divide between the Twitter version of the poll and the main website version of the poll. Now, they both agree that Seabook and Liz should be dead last, which is understandable because, like, in terms of siblings, there's wasn't there wasn't too much going on with them. Um, as opposed to, for example, Zex and Rolina, who at one point become the leaders of two ideologically opposed sides, which then makes for some great drama. Which is an also why they're first on Gundam.info, but somehow only third on Twitter. Shar and Sayla then are the OGs, and again, they're fighting on opposing sides, making for some great drama, which is why they're in the lead on Twitter, but only second on Gundam.info. And then finally, we have Judo and Lena. Now, they might be on the same side, um, but their family roles play a very large role in the story. That's all I'm going to say to not give any spoilers. So, while on Gundam.info they're only third, they're second on Twitter. And if you want to cast your vote, I'll of course have the links down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam news. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news.